Hi, it's me again. I promised I'll be putting out more content, but there's been a lot of work, which is a good thing, which means I have income to be able to do other things and make this, okay? So I have like a spare few minutes and uh, I kind of cut something in the air, hence this whole, I just woke up look. So probably for the next four weeks, you'll be stuck with this until it gets out of the way, okay? Uh, but it's nice to be back to sit down and have these conversations that I hope will be meaningful to you and I hope would actually bring you some growth and probably tips here and there to um, improve your workflow. So today we'll just, uh, I'll just tell you, um, we'll be discussing my process, what I do and some of the common tools I actually take along with me for scouts that are actually useful to my cinematography process. One of the tools we could start with is the app. It's an app that's available on the App Store, both on Android and on iOS. It's called Sunseeker. I know you might have heard of it so many times, but I can't tell you how invaluable it has been. That actually, when you go to locations, right, some locations could be very amazing. And from these locations, you it makes sense to actually know where the sun is coming and the times you plan on shooting certain scenes. Because I can't tell you how many times I've been, I've seen a great location only to check where the sun's orientation is and you find out that you are not set up for success because most of the time when we light exteriors, we like to like backlit scenarios. And some of these times, if you do not end up, imagine your son actually flattening out your subject and that's how you deal, you have to like deal with it. When you now find out that um, the retention of the sun's part is actually awkward or off what you're trying to do. And it actually makes your light way more difficult because you'll be fighting nature. And in scenarios like that, an app is very helpful. You can coordinate with your producer, you can coordinate your location manager and with the client, giving them both technical and creative reasons that says, oh no, the sun is gonna be like this this way and as a result, we will not get the best of lighting setups. Or at the time the sun will be at the point we need it to be, we'll be in rush for time and it will not set up for success. So it's all about balance and being able to do all of that. The next is um, Atomis, which is a very, very um, cool app for when I'm not going around with this. I will tell you what this is in a bit. Let me just break it out there. It's like the digital version of your director of use finder you get. And it's quite light because when you're going out and about, you just like need to like bring out the portable app, go in there, select your cameras. Most cameras are like there. They are not totally updated with all the lenses options because sometimes I usually play around the actually play around the weird territory of lens options you get. So not everything is there, but mainstream lens like the, the Arri lens, the Canon lens, the Zeiss lens, the most of the popular options, about let's say 80% of the lens, they still get to update it, but yeah, keep that in mind. What that helps you do is you could virtually take a, a lens that you plan on using and you could actually see a a perspective frame of what it could look like and this frame could be used for storyboarding planning or give you a sense of whether it even works in case you're shooting let's say you go into like anamorphic mode and say okay what's the composition like what you're promising what your mind is thinking does it match with the realism of what you're facing and that could actually help inform those conversations on what you think would actually work Artemis is actually quite great but at the base level of like composing the frame the field of view and say okay Here's the first shot, it's gonna, we're gonna like frame it like this. You can take that and make your scribbles, right? Drawing your standings or uh, make certain light diagrams and take that document and you can easily communicate to your gaffer because when your gaffer gets to there, he sees the picture, he recognizes, okay, we're lighting from this window, we're doing from this, it's gonna be like triple diffusion, it's gonna be all the technical language and jargons. This is where the gen's gonna be situated. You get this, how the act, direction of the actors are pushing in. So the entire technical team could be on the same page with you from that same document in your pre-production process. So on the next gear that I like, it's a repetition, but this is way more fun. Why? Because um, there's something about working with tools rather than pressing your phone when you're on set. It's almost like a spiritual process because your phone is a distraction. Like when you're trying to work on Artemis, you never can tell. Some messages could come, there's an emergency, there's a notification, something could distract you. Or sometimes you are not even aware of your battery and your phone dies while you're doing so. Which is why I try as much as possible to limit the much of, the much of um, digital footprint that actually is present on set. It covers from like 10 mm to oh, close to about 200, uh, 300 millimeters you get, and you get all your um, aspect ratio from your one, four by three to 16 by nine to 185 to um, two by two, all of it is just there on this box. And you actually have like diopters that's located on it, whereby you can actually um, adjust it to what your eye sees 
and you could also one of the cool things is that you could also mimic the sensor plane that you're working from from anamorphic to super 35 to micro four thirds to super 16 you could just click it and get like a simulation now why this is super great like i could literally plug this in my eye walk around the entire room find the entire perspective i think works and like bring the camera here set the frame like this and this is how i want to see it right it's more efficient before i used to play with the cameras like the five to take a picture and show the frame but sometimes the sensor does not match because when you use like a 5d mark 3 to like take a picture and give it you may be shooting a super 35 camera you get and your 5d will take a full frame picture which means the perspective would differ and even if you try to match it with like a wider lens the depth of field would also differ so it makes it a lot more an inaccurate process just like guess and get it right you need like a a DP who's way super technical to be able to like take out all the difference account for it and actually get you what you desire you get so this is very valuable in that process of just being the moment cutting yourself off from electronic social media and just be present in the entirety of what you're seeing demands and what you're trying to achieve I said the best for the last because I, I would like to term it an essential which is everybody says dead most people do not believe in it and I understand the light meter you get everybody has gone on to the places whereby um, they use false colors i like a lackman zone personally they use um, waveform histograms and other exposure too they're all great right even among those digital tools some of my favorite or at the top of that list i'll put a lackman zones there because it communicates in film stock you could also buy the very cheap one from the used market and the reason why that is very great um, good is because this has but the ambient meter that you can just to just get a general reading of what the entire ambience is and it also has like the spot meter to actually take targeted readings you get so right now if i uh, just for fun we're here right like i could fire this up and i'll say okay so the meter has like your um your iso your shot speed and the frame per second you're shooting right and it has several modes that are also useful for photography but that's out of this conversation but for the sake of just measurement right we'll just like take a reading and see what do we see here like the ambient reading we're having here is at five six you get and we can i could also like switch into the spot meter mode and take like a um incident reading if i had like a targeted exposure i would just like go in there and like okay chill check what the skin is, what's that highlight reading now, what's the stop gaps and all of this. And it's super useful because, like I said, it takes me away from what I would like to call chimping around the camera, which most of the time, most of us do, you get. One last time for actually, I actually forgot to throw into the mix that has become a regular one. It's not really vital, but at the same time, it's kind of important, you get. It's the AC waistband. Uh, I think I have one. It comes the pouch i think this one is from i forgot where it's from but yeah it comes in it has like a buckle you do not need to get this you could use your regular belt but the reason why i prefer this it has velcros right and if it's not going to disgrace itself <laughs> you could literally just move this out of the way right and you'd have like this pouch so this can actually go into like this and um Stick on it because they are both velcro and i have my tools on my waist so for the life of me these are like um my go-to tools that i actually like work with on a daily basis presently it took me a while to actually get here so i didn't wake up one morning and say this is your status list so i'm not saying if you do not have this you can't start your journey or if you're actually working cinematographer you just go out there because like all of them at once could be like a lot of investment so you just creep up the other things i would like to put in my toolkit they are not yet in there but yes those those would come in as we go forward like as we go forward in the entire conversation and being able to like deliver our cinematic intent because everything is done in the service of the story and whatever makes that happen effectively and efficiently is a win so until next time i see you where we'll grab the next conversation uh, improvise adapt and overcome